I've uh, just set this uh, temporary kind of bit of shade cloth up just on a second hand because Evo is a bit broken, it's the central kind of piece is broken. I've just tied it together with a bit of string. There's nothing to stop it sort of flopping down and going the wrong way though, so at the moment it's just sort of slung over the top. But it, it's better than nothing, although where I'm working now is in full sun. Um, this is maybe my fifth worm bed I've made. And um, what I've done here, just cover this up with cardboard, just keep it a bit damp while I've got it open. And um, this is uh, four week old compost from my, from my bins, which is really quite far gone. It's just, it's still got some wood chip in there, which uh, needs a bit longer to break down completely. So what I'll do is I'll just leave that in here and then when I need more space, I'll, I'll empty that out. So what I've got, uh, I don't know if I see, you can see those bins there, they're 25 litre um, car wash detergent containers. So I've cut the top off with a handle and the, the spout and then you just get this big container. They're about, about um, 12 inches square and maybe 18 inches, 16 to 18 inches tall. So they still hold 25 litres, it's just you haven't got the handle on there, so it's just open. So what I've done here, you can just see, I've got a couple of, uh, of course there's blocks, of, um, old reclaimed bricks just to support the, the lid. And then I've got six of these containers set in. And then I'm just filling them right up to the top with uh, the part composted material. So here's an example of what I'm working with. You can see this, it's still a bit woody. Yeah, it's just not too bad. It would be alright as mulch, but um, I've got the space in these worm beds, so I thought I'd um, fill them right up. So what I'll do here, I'll just tip the other one, fill that one here, and then what I've got, I've got the damp cardboard, and there's a... I don't know if you've ever seen this bit. It's not very exciting. But there's a plunge tank there. I've got a load of old tea towels and I'm soaking those and what I'll do is I'll just lay those over the top like a kind of moisture layer, moisture blanket and then I'll put the cardboard back on top, give it a quick water and then put the boards back. So what I've got here, uh, this is sort of in between, I had some onions, the onions, uh, I think they had allium leaf miner so I just had to sort of harvest those, they're quite small but um, they won't last very long so I just used those uh, while I could just uh, yesterday. So there's the containers where I've just dug out some of the soil. It's not too bad, there's a little bit of clay in there, but what I might do is just break it up, put it over the top of one of the very deep beds and then mulch over it. So by the time it's it's so much compost in there that kind of do its thing. Break it up with a worm activity. So it's quite hard to see, but this, this bed here, you see this one here, this is sort of eight foot long. And then you've got a got a, a worm bed here. There's another eight foot bed there, and then just where that board is there, you can just see there's another worm bed there. And then there's a cloche. Uh, I've got carrots and radishes in there. Beyond that, you can see where these these um, trampoline kind of uh, frames are. There's going to be another worm bed there. I've just got to dig that out a little bit. So basically, you've got the sort of three prongs of the yi, and then there's a worm bed in between each one. So it's sort of 18, 16 inches, 18 inches deep, and then I've dug down and put wood chip in there. So the idea is, with this this plot, this has been sort of terraced, so it steps steps right down. And then these beds have been built up um, quite a lot. Yeah, you can see the, uh, there's about 12 inches, and then there's about four inches of brick underneath, so or 16 inches higher. So. I haven't really had to break down into the subsoil, but if there is a bit of a sump there, what I've done is I've dug wood chip in there, which hopefully will improve the drainage. But then if there's any sort of clay pan, that is really underneath all of the, the raised bed. And what I'll do with these worm beds, when I sort of harvest the castings, and by the time the worms have kind of broken down and broken down to that wood chip, and they're sort of loosening up the soil, I'll probably dig out, even if it's two or four inches each year, then you'll get much more depth of the drainage as well. But what I want to do here is where the poly tunnel is, because that was on a slope. Oh, you're not very really sure of it's shot. Yeah, 
you can see I've, I've, I've built these steps here so it's built up so that's sort of four inches that's another four inches then the, the wood chip can, can really go up to the bottom of those those blocks and then that'll be level with the, the base of the poly tunnel so I can kind of come up another three or four inches and then that'll be pretty much up to the top of that bed and ideally I want to kind of sink a couple of baths in here have a little French drain so it kind of drains down there but uh, this is all a bit of work in progress at the moment there's the poly tunnel I don't know how this is going to show up that's the most important thing a cup of coffee uh, had some straw oops I had some strawberries I think they were quite early cropping so I think they're kind of finishing now I got some runners to go in and I got this red basil which is quite fun got a few more tomato plants got some hops going on here and there's some little chilies coming on and then some Chinese kind of green sort of pak choy kind of stuff I don't know what's these seeds were pretty awful I think they were kind of last year I've got a few things coming up I've got some rocket I've got some gazanias I think that was um, kale or something like that but these are the tomato plants I need thinning out a little bit and then I've got some sort of very wicking beds at the back it's beautiful bumblebees come in so oh, I've got the um, green plant collars, the halos I don't know if they're how good they are but I just fill them up to the top of um, rainwater and let it permeate through I've got a, a small um, container there that set up of the irrigation system in a little timer I want to connect that up to the, the bigger water butt fill that from the tap oxygenate it for a sort of 24 hours and let it dechlorinate and then use that to irrigate really and then I can kind of irrigate every couple of days and hopefully the chlorine will evaporate off that's the sort of Cape gooseberry there it's quite exciting apparently with those you can take um, cuttings and then bring them on in in water just to get them rooted and then you can use those to overwinter so then you can plant them with another plant which will be that much further on next year I've, I've started sort of I've done a big raised bed there you can't see there yeah it sort of steps up I just had a load of compost and built that up it's the last meter is just pots and storage I've got to tidy that up it's not too bad now and because um, I share this polytunnel <laughs> share the allotment really I've basically got half so there's sort of down to the water but and then the other bit is uh, Laura's kind of tomato plants and chilies I think she's got some melons and there's some very dry looking hanging baskets but the that bit of the back is, is Laura's bit and I've just got to tidy up that, that last corner so these are the famous uh, sedum planters which I had to move from the way the, where the clubhouse was apparently they're going to put a a brick drain or some sort of brick edging so that was the reason behind it I don't know why they went about just sort of making them out as the worst thing on the, the, the planet that they needed to go but I don't know maybe once they've done some kind of edging I'll put those planters back but anyhow I've just uh, had a cup of coffee get my breath back sit in the shade and cool down a bit and then um, I'll just get that last little bed done so, I don't know, because this is so hot today the worms are probably buried right down. Oh, you can see some cocoons up near the top, and that's got a good old look. Yeah, I think they're quite low, but you can see quite a few worms in there, and that's just from where they've been in the compost bin. The other thing I'm, I'm doing with these is, um, yeah, I don't know if you'll be able to see through all the uh, mesh and stuff, but you can just see those planters there. Just beyond that, there's a you can just see the sort of ribs on the side it's just um, three big 330 litre compost bins on the left there I've got a big container of wood chip and then basically it's 50% wood chip which is already part composted and 50% brewer's waste then those fill up and then the idea was once they've been about four to well maybe one month or two months depending on the time of year once that's part composted down I'll tip these straight out and what I'll, I think what I'll do is I'll just tip them out straight into the beds and then fill that with fresh material and then any I don't know if there's some cocoons in there I might have a little sort of fork through carefully just to sort of put them back in the beds but I'm not going to be too worried because 
because these beds have got such a layer of mulch on top, because these are um, 10 inches boards, and then you've obviously, because it was terraced, that was really raised up, so it's probably about 16 inches of, of compost on there, so there's masses. So many worms that are in here. If that material has got no food source for them, I think they can kind of circulate through between the beds and then here. What I'll do is I'll try and, I mean, this needs a bit of weeding, but because um, it's fairly loose, it's, it's going to be quite dry at the moment, so I don't know how well this will work. Yeah, that's sort of, it's got most of the root on there and dandelions and things just pull straight up so I'm not too worried about weeds really unless there's lots of competition from the other plants so yeah most of it comes up and I think I'll, once these onions are finished I'll just carefully give it a bit of a weed but and that's the difference with no dig but quite day of the year weeds just pull straight up this, this is fantastic I mean, this is all the, the only weeds that are kind of blown in and they just literally just pull out. Oh, there's some onions there. That's been quite nice actually. Never grown onions before. Oh, they're nice. Yeah, so what I'm doing with these beds, I've got some floorboards to go back on top so they'll make the lid. And then I've got these wicking, um, they call them capillary trays. And then I sit those on top. And then I've got some sedums there which go on top of that so you don't, you really you kind of don't want something that's use, usable space. And then there's a, a cloche there, I've got to cut a tube for what I did is um, I got these, I don't know where they're from, Premier Tunnels or something like that. Uh, they're four, well it's just over four foot square, but the pipe I've got for the top tube for the sort of ridge piece is slightly too short so it's not kind of square at the ends. And then I've made some, some sort of access panels and I've got to fix that in, but because I've kind of got slightly obsessed with doing all these worm beds. I've been doing all the digging bits and then the other bits been sort of uh, playing a bit second fiddle already. These are the um, safety poles from the trampoline netting I think. Or well, what's quite good if you bang them in the corners of the beds um, when you run up hose pipe it doesn't kind of catch on everything but this is quite good fun. Look. That's, that's the bed there. Yeah, you know, just want to show how far that goes in the ground. <laughs> Crazy, isn't it? So that's about two foot. So imagine doing that with lumen and clay. Pretty marvellous. All these sedums are getting quite. Dry, so they're flowering a lot at the moment. There you go.